one emergency. Hi, I'm I'm having chest pains. Okay, are you breathing normally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm having a heart attack. Okay, the fire department is on the way. Stay on the line with me. Okay. It's a typical Tuesday for Engine 220 in Mesa, Arizona. Fire engineer Larissa Dvorak and her crew are responding to their 11th medical call for the day. Well, this job really does keep us on our toes. Sometimes we're out of the station more than we're in it. Dvorak is a paramedic with the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. 75% of this fire department's calls are medical in nature. In fact, the department recently added medical to its name to reflect the primary service provided. Mesa Fire and Medical. Some people are surprised to find out that I'm not only a firefighter, but I'm also a paramedic. We have two EMTs and two paramedics on every fire truck, and that way when we respond to an emergency, we have all hands available to help us and we're prepared for anything. Rod, I'm going to start an IV on you right now, okay? So we can see if we can give you some medicine to help with your right. chest pain. We see a lot of patients who are complaining of chest pain, so they'll feel a tightness or a squeezing or a pressure in their chest, and sometimes that can be an indicator of a heart attack or some other cardiac condition. On a scale of one to 10. When we respond to those calls, we need all of our personnel. So what would happen is if we approach a patient who's complaining of chest pain, I would be assessing the patient and asking them how they're doing. Is the oxygen helping you feel better at all? Have them tell me about their history, the medications they're taking, and kind of get some good sense of how they're feeling today, where Pat okay. would be um, recording all that information, and he would then get medications for them, start IVs, and do other paramedic-type skills to help the patient relieve some of their pain. Um, we would have Therese putting them on oxygen, and Scott would be doing vital signs, and all of those things to really get a good picture of how our patient is doing. So, so as you can see, there's a lot to be done to take care of a single patient who's complaining of chest pain. So we really do use all the hands that we have available to us. And as you can see, they're busy at all times. Dvorak and her crew also bring multiple boxes filled with medications and tools to every scene, so they're always prepared. This is our cardiac monitor. It's a very sophisticated piece of equipment. It not only allows us to defibrillate, but also perform a 12 lead EKG. A 12 lead EKG means firefighters put 10 sticker-like devices on your chest, which allows them to see 12 views of your heart. This is incredibly important for paramedics because they can identify life-threatening abnormalities on the spot. Hey, Pat, it looks like he has ST elevation in V1, V2, and V3. Looks like he has a STEMI, so we better get going. Mesa Fire and Medical Department is setting records when it comes to door to balloon time. That door is from residents to cath lab and opening the coronary artery. Dr. Gary Smith is an award-winning physician and the department's medical director. The definition of a STEMI is an elevation of the ST segment on an EKG tracing. When we do see the changes that happen on the EKG, a red flag is definitely shown and an individual then needs to be taken directly to a cath lab where it is that that artery within the heart may be opened up. The national average in 2011 for what doctors call the door to balloon time is 90 minutes or less. Mesa Fire and Medical is completing this in 70 minutes or less. It's the well-experienced, highly trained paramedic with the wonderful equipment that they have at their disposal to better care for the citizens and visitors of the city of Mesa. But what if it's more than a heart abnormality? What if your heart suddenly stops beating? Now one emergency. My, my coworker, I think he's had a heart attack. I, he's on the ground. I, I don't know if he's breathing. I need you to send someone. Okay, is he conscious? No. Okay, is he breathing normally? No, I, I, no, I don't think so, no. Okay. Sudden Sorry. cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death among adults over the age of 40 in the United States. That's according to the American Heart Association. Yeah. This means your heart has suddenly stopped beating. The Mesa Fire and Medical Department has saved more patients who've suffered a sudden witness cardiac arrest than any other fire department in the nation. And what does that mean exactly? What that means is that when a person has a sudden witness collapse, they've collapsed suddenly, somebody sees them, and their heart is fibrillating, they're in ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. When we arrive, we're able to save them nearly 50% of the time. The department's key to success lies in their method, dispatch-assisted CPR and MICR. First, when a person calls 911, the operator tells the witness how to begin hands-only CPR. The witness never does mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Instead, they focus on chest compressions. This is dispatch-assisted CPR. 
Four minutes later, when firefighters arrive, they take over by performing MICR, meaning minimally interrupted cardiac resuscitation. To respond to a cardiac arrest, it's all hands on deck. We immediately start assessing the situation. One of our EMTs, Scott, would start compressions. Compressions are vital. We have to continue that throughout because our hands are their heart. We need to keep that heart pumping. We need blood flowing to the brain continuously. One of the other EMTs, Therese, she would pro be providing oxygen to the patient. One of our paramedics, Pat, he would be administering medications to the patient. We have medications that we can give that really work to try to get the heart to start pumping again. That's really critical. It, it works together with what Scott's doing in the compressions to really keep blood clear? flowing to the vital organs. I would be working with a monitor. I would be assessing the patient's heart rhythm and we would be administering a defibrillation to the patient if that was necessary as well. Okay, shocking. It's a well-orchestrated dance. Every member plays a vital role. This new method requires training and additional knowledge for the firefighters. Our job does require a lot of training, so we have ongoing training throughout the year to make sure that we stay really sharp on our skills. We have new uh, material coming out. There's always new medications, there's new uh, equipment, there's new technology that we really need to stay up on to provide the best care for our patients. Paramedics have dozens of medications in their toolbox. They have to know how to use them and when it's appropriate. New technology and equipment require the EMTs to know how to help paramedics. All of this training and knowledge so they can provide quality care. But Dvorak says saving a life isn't enough. So a save to us would be the patient would get to go home from the hospital without any deficits. That means they were able to go back to work. That means they were able to go back to their home and to their families and their children and their grandchildren and have the good life and the fun times they had before this event occurred. One way the department is doing this is through their state-of-the-art ventilators some of that fluid out of your lungs. So we're going to put a mask on your face that has a little pressure. It's normally only available in the hospital setting, but the technology has been made available to us so that we can bring it out into the field. So why is this piece of equipment so special? This piece of equipment is really important, particularly for those patients who are having trouble breathing because there's fluid building up in their lungs. Mm -hmm. That's a condition that really causes a lot of anxiety, difficulty breathing. This piece of equipment has been really phenomenal because just by simply putting this mask on the the patient, mm -hmm. it puts a little pressure down in their lungs and helps push the fluid out. Are you feeling better now, Leslie? So though there's a time and a place to put a tube down someone's throat to help them breathe, the patient is much better off because when we put a tube down their throat, it puts them at higher risk for infection. A person who's re acquired a pneumonia from having the tube put down their throat, the average cost is about $68,000 in a very long hospital stay. So there's really no doubt about it, the citizens are better off because you have this piece of gear on your trucks. Absolutely. After spending 24 hours together and years in the same station, they're a family. So I finally grabbed a handful. A family who says they're happy to be there for your family's emergency, no matter what it may be. <laughs> We chose to do this because we care about the people in our community. We don't care how big or how small their emergency is. We do this every day because we love it and we want to make their day a little bit better. Med call.